Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Be ever impressive. But never duplicate. 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 Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. And right now we are about to do the teardown of the, of the Epiphone Les Paul model. It's not a special or anything else, but it is a shorter scale. And I gotta say, this thing feels pretty comfortable as far as playing goes. It does have a little bit of sharp edges on the sides over here of the frets, but overall the guitar actually sounds pretty damn good so what I'm going to start doing is start stripping down and bagging up a lot of these parts because I'm going to be using probably everything that's already on here exception of the gold knobs I don't like the gold knobs they don't go with anything on here as far as being gold goes and I'm going to get rid of this poker chip as well I always do never liked them don't care for them uh, they kind of look ugly and take away from the guitar itself so I'm not gonna be able to turn this by hand and unscrew it by hand. Uh, well, doesn't look like I'm gonna do it. Too. So let's see here. Where it is it is? Love this tool for doing this job. Removing these things here. A lot of times I don't even have to adjust it. It pretty much fits right over it and takes it off, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the washers here. Now I've got a plan for this as far as refinishing it goes, and it does not involve anything, oh this is actually a stick on, huh? Wow, surprise, surprise, can't get off. I'm not going to have anything to do with a new veneer, I'm going to paint this one, uh, but I'm just going to paint the top of it. Uh, the sides and the back. This, this guitar is like brand new. It's not even uh, has nothing as far as awareness goes on the body at all, showing any signs of being used. Come on, you. There you go. Yeah, it's a little bit of tape. Double faced tape was on the back of this. That'll be removed when I start cleaning this thing up and getting rid of a lot of the parts. Yeah, I don't like these. I don't care for them. These knobs as well really don't go with anything on this guitar. So these are going to be plucked as well. Can I pull them off by hand? Uh, yep, I can. Maybe those two I can't. So let's go ahead and let's just sit here. Got to be careful with these because this will actually break the knob. But if I can wiggle it off using this, I will. And it doesn't damage the guitar body at all. All right, there you go. So I'm put these in the bag. As you heard, that fell on the floor. All right, go ahead and remove my controls here. Now, oh, it's too small. And we're probably gonna need 10, maybe? Yeah, probably a 10. Yep. I'm going to get everything stripped off this thing. Now the body on this thing, other than having some smudges from fingerprints or my hands playing, you know, messing around with this thing, there's nothing on it. It's like friggin' brand new. That's why I don't understand, you know, people selling their guitars and stuff like that. And this thing I got for fucking next to nothing as well as just like the Epiphone Special that I just got done with, which... It's on eBay now. I posted it up. I got a starting bid at 250 So let's see where it goes from there. I'll put a link in the bottom. The one thing I hate that sometimes people do is they'll put crazy glue, a little dab of crazy glue, on the nut for some of these pots. And the reason why they do that is because they don't want them to back, you know, come loose or anything. And then you got a spinning pot. I've done it myself on guitars as well, where I locked them in a little bit. 
well, they have a crazy way. I hate when other people do it, but it's okay if I do it, right? So let's get these washers off. And they won't stick in. I stick it to the clear. There you go. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be using the electronics on this thing or not. I might be. Who knows? Get these covers off. The tuners, I have a set of locking tuners for this thing that I'll put on here. Um, let's see, what else am I going to do with this thing? Hmm. Still has the plastic over these. This one still has the plastic on it as well. So this is not going to get a total refinish because it really doesn't need it. But I do want to customize it a little bit. So I've got a plan and the color of this body kind of goes with the plan that I have for this. And I'm not going to strip the body down to bare wood, mahogany or whatever this thing is made of. It's probably mahogany. Right, so can I use the plastic to kind of pull this thing up with since it's kind of a little bit ripped. Fails the tape trick. Yep, works. And so we got some shielding going on here. Not a whole hell of a lot of shielding, but we got do have some shielding. Now, what are these pickups? Let's see here. These single wired pickups. Yeah, they look like they're single wired. So let's get three of the washers. Yep. Are in here, and I don't see any more. I see a few of them. I'm get stuck in the pool there now. So instead of four washers, they put three washers on here for the uh, to lock down the pots. Let's see what kind of pots they put on here. So they have a audio and linear tapers here. No. Okay, yeah, they got audio taper for the audio tapers for the tones and linear tapers for the volumes. Oh, there's that extra washer. Oh, it fell out. I need any white cutters because I am clipping away here. I'm probably not going to use those. Who knows? I have no idea what I'm going to do. Got a wire tire up here. It's always kind of nice to leave the wires a little bit long in case you want to do something in here. Or So we have everything here. I'm going to clip this too. There we go. So, this is it, huh? We'll go ahead and remove these strings. I doubt this is a locking tailpiece or bridge. Tuners move quite smooth, but the G string has got a little bit of a grinding feeling to it, so I'm, I'm not going to use them. I replace. Do this without pinching myself. Damn. Be too many at one time or what? These wire cutters are as old as I am. And they're starting to show their age a lot more. How do you know those? That's better. 
Yep, no lock. So these slide in through that. It says Epiphone on the bottom of the bridge. I don't know if you can see that or not. A little bit of Epiphone there. So the reason why I have been tearing up Epiphone guitars and doing the customizing to them is just to see basically where where it's, everything stands as far as what people like, what people think is affordable, and what people are interested in as far as detail work that I've been doing on these guitars uh, as far as artwork and shit like that goes. And do it on an Epiphone instead of something really, really expensive. That way, if you know people don't like it, well, it's only an Epiphone. It's not anything you know, hardcore. <coughs> but I do have some surprises that may be coming in in the future. Um, I'm going to start doing some Ibanezes, not Geos. I'm going to start doing some Ibanezes, customizing them. Uh, working with different body styles and shapes. Uh, I possibly have a custom guitar that is a scratch build coming up for a very close friend of mine. Actually, it is my first girlfriend's, uh, which I stay in touch with, and I'm still friends with her, but it's my first girlfriend I ever had. Her son is autistic, and he's learning how to play guitar. All right, so the body is pretty much stripped. This is very, very lightweight. It is a mahogany, and uh, I'm sure the neck is probably mahogany too. Probably has a scarf joint in it or whatever. But the neck is heavier than the body is, and that's including with the tuners, but we'll see how it is when I remove them. So I don't have a short scale length uh, notch straight edge, so I had to go by basically setting this on top of the frets and kind of straightening it out this way so right now I added a little bit of a uh, back bow in there so what I want to do now is kind of remove that back bow which is very little turns it still has a little bit in there I'm not turning it much just very little Until I get that to where there is no more bouncing. And if I can get a two between the fret. Yeah, see this is not letting me put this under. Yeah, so I am pretty much straight. This is not letting me put a 2000s shim between the not straight edge and the fretboard. So the frets fretboard is perfectly fucking straight. I'll tell you, a nice job. I mean, as far as painting this goes, it's not all, there's no runs in it, it there's no nothing. I mean, you did a beautiful job on painting that. Now, the one thing that I noticed with this, and this is the first time I've ever seen this, there are lock washers inside of where we, these screws are. These screws are real tight as far as uh, trying to take them out. Um, between the body and the neck, they don't open up these holes just a hair bigger uh, than the screw holes that are in the neck. Uh, so they thread out completely. I don't like that because to me, you know, you could probably still get a shim or something between the neck and the body if these were opened up just a tiny hair bigger, just enough for the threads to slide through there. That would suck that neck right into the body really tight. But yeah, I've never seen washers inside there, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get those out because they're kind of wedged in there. But yeah, that's it, this is the body. So now I need to start wet sanding this and getting it prepped for the idea that I'm gonna do. I have to look to see if I have any white or black pickup rings uh, because the binding on this is white. The binding around the body is not really a cream more on the white side than as dark as this is and these do not say epiphone on them they have no markings at all on them and uh yeah so but they didn't sound too bad with high distortion the three-way switch is marked epiphone on there the bridge is marked epiphone on there um 
So yeah, this is an Epiphone, what can I say? So let me get this thing started for prepping and uh, get this glue over here from the double face tape taken off there. I don't want that to be on the sandpaper because that will gum up and kind of smear around here on there. So I gotta get uh, some little bit of rubbing alcohol will remove that with no problem. All right. All right, so I've got my 800 grit sandpaper on my sanding block sitting inside my water cup over here with a very mild detergent inside of there uh, just to add a little bit of lubrication as I'm sanding so the paper doesn't stick a lot to the finish as I'm sanding it. Now what I want to do, the plan is, is to just cut the top of the clear coat without going through it into the color and then into the color to the wood. And I'm using 800 grit sandpaper because Paint needs something to bond to. If you use anything lighter than an 800 grit sandpaper, you're going to end up, uh, say if you're trying to mask something off or, or your design it needs to be taped or something and you've already got part of the design laid out on your finish uh, and you have to mask over it so you don't get bleed through or paint on top of the paint that you just already sprayed, a different color or whatever. If you go to peel off that tape, with 800 grit sand, sandpaper, chances are your paint will stay on your body or whatever you're painting. If you use anything lighter than an 800 grit sandpaper, chances are you peel that tape, you're also going to peel off bits and pieces of the paint that didn't quite stick into the finish that you sanded. If you go with say like a 220 or 320 grit sandpaper, uh, chances you might end up with sanding scratches through your finish so you may be able to see the, the sandpaper marks through it and I don't want that either. So 800 grit, just what we used to do with the automotive, worked out perfect, never had a problem with it. Shouldn't be a problem with this because that's what I've been doing ever since I started doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the sanding. I've got my paper over here and it's wet. I'm going to put a little bit of water on the finish here and go ahead and just start scuffing this enough to where everything is dull. There is no shiny spots whatsoever on this thing. And that's what I'm looking for here. Being careful not to get too much water in the holes. Because that will actually swell up the wood and the wood will end up, uh, the paint will end up cracking where that wood is. And if this is not completely flat, as far as the surface goes, after I sand it, there will be shiny spots showing a little divot or something that is keeping the block from being flat. So right now I'm just seeing a white milky color, no red paint or anything on here. So that's telling me that I'm doing pretty good as far as cutting, only cutting the clear coat. That's fine here. But again, I want this thing to be, the surface to be nice and flat and nice and dull all the way up to the edges because this whole top is going to be re-cleared. And I'm not soaking this thing, I'm not using a lot of water, but enough to lubricate the paper to cut. And I'm not putting any pressure on this either, I'm kind of just letting the block in the paper do its job. Probably going to take a couple of times sanding this to get all of the shiny surface off of it. Put that back in there and just take a look at how dull this thing ended up coming out and where there are still shiny spots. And I like to hit it with some air to dry it a lot faster. So as you can see, you know, there's 
shiny spots here, shiny spots here, shiny spot here. There's shiny spots on this thing still. And that's what I want to get rid of. It seems to be pretty flat. I mean, these shiny spots are there, but they're not uh, really, really sunken into where they're, they're actual shiny, shiny spots. Like it didn't cut at all. It actually cut a little bit of it, but not much. I said I want to stay away from seeing any color for this. And I am going in a crisscross pattern that will help with the paint stick real good. And you want to make sure your hands are clean as well. You don't want oily or dirty hands to contaminate your work here because that will cause you a problem as far as uh, paint sticking. Let's get a look at what I've got here. All right, she is getting there. As you can see that there's less shiny spots. Not as bad as what it was. Around the edges here, because it kind of folds over a little bit, I'm probably gonna to have to go over that by hand, which is not a big deal. I don't wanna go on the side, I just wanna hit the top. So I'm gonna use my fingertips on the edge. Because you want that edge to be nice and sanded and dull, because if it's not, your paint or clear coat would really end up peeling off very easily.
Now I'll let this dry real good. And then I'm gonna wet sand this again, probably with the 1500 grit paper, just around the edges over here to knock down some of the shadowing and the lip, the paint lip. What I ended up doing is I went real light coats several times till it started covering the red. Once I got the white that I'm looking for, that's when I stopped. So this part over here, you see that there's no stripe here. Well, I'm gonna do a black line up against a white line over here. Another black line over here, a couple of them over here. So you get the idea of what this thing's gonna look like. And it's not meant to look perfect. I wanted the edges to look like they're ripped and torn, jagged edges on there. That's why I peeled the tape in half and used one side on one side and the other side on the other side. And they left the ripped end in the middle so it can give me this little bit of effect here. And yeah, so it's gonna be well, an Eddie Van Halen LP.